feature boot camp. This is the start of a brand new session, 17th November 2023. So this will be our last session for this year. Um, we're so glad to have you guys here. Feature boot camp is our most popular and oldest class. This was the first thing that I taught two years ago when I started doing script camp in the first place. So we're glad to have you along with us and hopefully you will be able to write your feature in this class and then the idea is you take another feature bootcamp and you can write another feature and you can just repeat them as often as you want until you get the process really, really down and you have all your questions answered and you have your own sort of path forward made for you. So let's get started. Um, we are part of WordCamp, sorry, we're part of SkillCamp, which is our nonprofit offering free and low cost classes to help learn new skills for your life goals. WordCamp and ScriptCamp are two of our servers in SkillCamp. We also include servers like Film Camp, Creator Camp, Word, um, sorry, Design, Lingo Camp, Code Camp for all these different skills that you can learn over Discord with lots of free classes, table reads, script swaps, and writers groups on Script Camp and Word Camp, and with some of our classes for supporting members. So if you are in this class today, this is free and public and open to everybody. But if you want to continue to the end of the course, you should make sure to sign up. You can do that by going to scriptcamp.net. Scroll down to sign up for unlimited membership, which includes access to every single class on all of our servers, not just on ScriptCamp, but that'll include things like novel writing classes on WordCamp, animation classes on ToonCamp, language learning classes on LingoCamp with over 100 hours of live classes every month. We've got exclusive member chat channels, video, video library, which has access to recordings of all of the previous um, sessions, big discounts on consultations and proofreads, and many other benefits that you can see here. So I recommend signing up, and if you sign up yearly, you will save 40% and be paying just $19 a month for access to every class on every server. Just a tiny bit about me, I am Connor Kyle, you can see here, I've been featured in um, a couple lists that I, I you can see on this uh, card here. I've been hired to write an episode of Shredder's Creep Show back in 2019. I've had a few feature scripts set up at production companies in town um, before the strike, and most recently was uh, advanced to second round of Sundance Labs um, with a feature horror script. I mostly write horror, thriller, and action. That's kind of my area of specialty. And um, no matter what you're writing, you're allowed to write whatever you want in these classes, but I will be providing the feedback and instruction to the best of my ability. You may not agree with every single thing, every note, every idea that I have, but the idea behind, or the main principle behind boot camps like this is that you will learn your own process, you will learn how you organize yourself and um, how you're going to create um, a method that is repeatable every time you write a script because there's so much more than just writing a single script. So we have a couple of boot camps. TV pilot starts December 3rd. That's going to be running Sundays 10 to noon. On um, And these are all Pacific Standard Time because we're LA based. So uh, Sundays 10 to noon for TV pilot. We have feature boot camp. That's this class. That doesn't start December 1st, does it? Are there two week zeros, Nacho? Is that correct? Oh, maybe he stepped away for a moment. That's, go ahead. That's week one. Is the it's, it starts on December first. What's the twenty fourth? Like introduction. And then week one is December first. Oh, okay, so we're just we have next week uh, off. Thanksgiving next week. Right next week we have off for Thanksgiving. Okay, good to know. Thank you for that. Nacho hosts many events on the server as well. Runs many aspects of the website, um, and is a moderator, of course. So um, we are a whole community. We're more than just these classes. If you stick around, you can volunteer to co-host events or things like this. And this is a great place to meet other writers that are trying to do the same thing that you are doing. So highly recommend becoming known here, meeting people. Maybe you can find collaborators or writing partners this way if that's what you're looking for. But in any case, you will at least be able to meet those who are trying to accomplish the same goals. And you'll be able to learn together at the same time. Okay, so here's the upcoming bootcamp schedule. So yeah, we do have next week off for Thanksgiving, but right now this is week zero, basically just called how to write a movie, in which we're going to look ahead at the eight week process and help start to refine your log lines 
which might be at a very early stage right now, or maybe you don't even have the very essentials of your logline yet. Um, in which case, I would be working on it throughout the class today and be getting ready to share what you have if you want to just get that little nudge of feedback um, before you move ahead into week one. You do have two weeks because of the holiday to get your logline all sorted out. The goal would probably be to finalize your logline by the end of the next class on December 1st. For those that don't know, we'll get much more into loglines today, but the logline is just that one sentence that expresses what is your story about? So when this inciting incident occurs, an adjective protagonist must do X conflict before X ticking clock or before X sticks. Something like that. So we're trying to fit it into one single sentence that expresses what is this movie about? Whose journey or story is it? What are they up against? What is the hook? So if you haven't already started kind of scribbling away trying to figure out what your logline might be, I would open a new document right now and just start doing that. Um, we're not going to share them right away. We're going to share them at the, about the halfway mark of class. And the second half of class is mostly with these week zeros. A, a lot of the time, week one and week zero, the second half is mostly feedback on loglines. But you have to be ready to, first of all, copy and paste it into the chat. So don't post it too early or else we'll lose track of it. Just on your own paper, be writing out that early draft of your logline. And then when we post and share them, you need to be able to unmute and answer questions about them. It doesn't have to be perfect, and you don't have to know every element of the story, and you can always say, I don't know, or I'm not sure yet, or I haven't figured that out, or it's too early. It's not like there's right and wrong answers, and if you, if you don't have an answer for something, then you're being penalized. That's not how it works at all. The questions are to try to steer you and guide you at the early stages, so expect a lot of questions and kind of hole poking or whatever you call it you know finding the flaws in the idea be prepared to hear that something about your idea might not be working perfectly so probably don't pick some deeply held passion project or something that you would dishonor your family's legacy by not getting just right the idea is that the first draft is going to be completed by january 26th so this runs through the new year we do have a little bit of weird scheduling stuff around christmas and thanksgiving sometimes so expect to sometimes miss a day or two of class just due to those but in, or, or expect for the classes, I should say, to be pushed ahead a week or two because of those holidays. But in any case, every week we focus on a section of the script. So starting with the um, uh, outlining. So we start on pre-writing. We start on the sketchbook. We move ahead to story beats. We move that ahead to scene cards. And then as of the second half of the class, that's when you'll really be writing the pages for the script. So you don't need to get screenwriting software until halfway through the class. If you already have it, that's great. Uh, if you're already practicing with it and using it and learning how to use it, that's all fine. But you don't actually need to write a single line of dialogue or get format, you know, format anything at all until week four, which is December 22nd. So the first whole half of the class is all about building out this really thorough roadmap, getting really organized and figuring out, in theory, what happens on every page of your story before you commit it to pages or before you, we said go to pages, meaning that you move from pre-writing into actually formatting the scenes, staging the scenes, writing the dialogue, and all these things. So I mentioned already that you can sign up, scriptcamp.net. You can either get a class on its own, or ideally you sign up to become an unlimited member and save a bunch more money and be able to access so many more classes than just the one. So we hope to see you guys signing up, and you can vote in the poll that you'll see in the chat. There's little blue numbers that will come up. You can click one, two, three, or four if you have a question, or if you're not sure if you want to sign up, or things like this. We will be able to answer those questions for you today. You should see that up in chat pretty soon. Um, so that is where we're at. Um, normally we stop and do a bit of a discussion where you can raise a hand, tell us about yourself. Maybe you've written a movie before, or maybe it's your first ever attempt at doing this. Maybe you have a specific goal or specific style you're trying to emulate or thing you're trying to make. Um, we'll take a few hands raised if anyone wants to just introduce themselves. Tell us what you're trying to write, or what you're hoping to learn, or anything else that you want to be known. So you can now use the hand raise icon if you'd like by clicking that hand. You will then send an invitation to speak aloud, or you can use the text chat, which you can find on the left-hand side of your Discord window. You mouse over the classroom channel, find that small white word bubble that says open chat, and you can use that to send your text responses to this question. I'll give you guys a minute to do that.
And there is the poll. Thank you, Nacho. So if you're interested in those upcoming boot camps, you can click those little numbers. Or if you're not sure or have other questions, you can click 9 or 10. Let's hear some introductions. Who wants to tell us who you are, what you're planning to write, what you're a fan of, anything else? I see a hand raised here. Go ahead, 1C34 fan. Yeah, so I can't join the lead. So I personally about like uh, saying what you need to talk about or like what your goals are. Yeah, anything you want to share. Yeah, so I want to share that my goals are to become, is to, is to be signed to the opium label, like Playboy Cardi, you know, you know, Cardi, Kim Carson, Homoxide Gang, do you know the two bar? Not sure what you're talking about. Um, this is a screenwriting class. Is this a screenwriting related goal? Yeah. Okay, I think you might just no, no, be... Uh, I, was, uh, I was asking more stuff. Okay, I think you're trolling, so we're going to remove you from the stage. Um, so, uh, anyone else want to tell us about their specific goals? Oh, I'm sorry. 1C34 fan, we do have to ban you for trolling. Goodbye forever. We dropped him into the shark pit. Don't worry, guys. Phil, go ahead. So, Phil, your mic is muted. You'll have to unmute yourself. Okay, looks like Phil might be having some trouble unmuting himself. Dr. Sus, are you a real student who wants to tell us your goals or anything else that you'd yeah, like to I'm learn? Real okay, I'm go ahead. So, what happens that I would like to, I would like to write more, you know, I'm really inspired by this, you know, by this meeting, I would like to learn more about this. Um, my goals are really just to, like, be noticed by more, more writers, you know, that's why I dream. Okay, thank you so much for that. Thank you. And maybe Phil can unmute and speak. Maybe not. All right. Oh, there. there you go. There you go. Go ahead. Okay. Wow. That was a. That was weird. Okay. Um, I want to write a film about a. Uh, I've done some. I, I'm from Singapore. Well, I live in Singapore. And I've done volunteer work. Work with uh, Downs people, um, off and on my whole life, and I got the idea to write a film about an adult Down syndrome person wants to have a sex change and uh, very controversial I, I would imagine um, you know whether whether a Downs someone who has Down syndrome is self-aware enough self-conscious enough to want to have a sex change you know it would probably culminate in a courtroom scene probably you know where the Downs person has to uh, convince the judge or the jury that he or she is uh, self-aware and self-conscious enough to have a sex change. I think that's pretty controversial. Let's see Let's see the LGBT community deal with that one. <laughs> you know? Okay, so yeah, maybe some good conflict there. A lot of research to be done, certainly. Yeah. So, that, that's cool. Yeah. Thanks for weighing in. So, thank you for, the, thank you for this. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks. Sure. Thanks a lot, Phil. All right, um, so let's um, move ahead. Thank you for the introductions, guys. So you can write whatever kind of movie you are, whatever genre you're a fan of in the class is what I would recommend writing. You don't have to write any one specific thing. You're not trying to write something that will sell or something that will make any money, but the goal is really just to practice writing and getting better writing script after script after script and each one will be a little better than the last one and you will trend upward over time and that's how you build your skills. This takes a long time 
to build all those skills that you'll need. Luke says, my primary goal is the book currently. Want to get some pre-writing done on a feature for a B project. Great. Okay, well, this will be a good place to just learn those essentials of that pre-writing and planning. The full, first whole half of the course is nothing but planning and structuring and outlining. So it's very technical, very kind of um, uh, hard work up, up at the front as opposed to at the end. And by front-loading this work as opposed to back-loading it, you're saving yourself all this pain and hard work later. The, the difficulty of figuring out what happens in the scene should be removed from the difficulty of figuring out, okay, um, uh, how do I execute that? We, we don't want to be doing both at once. You don't want to be halfway through the script and thinking, okay, what on earth should happen now? That's why we spend the whole first half on planning. Looks like we have one more hand raised from Stefan. Uh, hello everyone. Hi, I'm Stefan. Some of you already know me from table reads and stuff like that. I've been writing on and off for a few years now, but everything I've written so far has been, to be completely honest, really, really terrible. I'm looking to get better. I am writing mostly action adventure films because that's the kind of movie that I like to watch. So I'm basically writing the movie that I would first and foremost enjoy watching. And my plan, my goal is to first get the movie that I have in my head onto the paper. And after that, we'll see what happens. And thank you for hosting this. This is awesome. Thank you, Stefan. All right, great. Action adventure is one of my big genres as well. So glad some folks are working on those. Um, let's move ahead to the ground rules. So just basic advice. Um, I'd recommend not picking a passion project or something that you're really deeply committed to or something that matters a lot to you for the just learning time where you're, you're, at, you're at a point where you can write whatever you want. You don't have to worry about how specifically will this advance my career in, in, in any way. So you can kind of do whatever. It can be any budget level. You can write a huge movie about space battles or you can write a tiny movie about a guy stuck in a motel room or anything in between. It's entirely up to you. The only thing I will suggest is not to pick something that you're going to be too perfectionist about, um, because especially in this abbreviated time window of eight weeks to write a whole movie, I mean, normally in the industry, you're going to get like 10, 12 weeks at least. Eight weeks is a really quick pace. Um, within that abbreviated time frame, it's really hard to write something amazing, especially if it's your first couple scripts within your first 10 scripts. So you can't rely on, you, you know, the only way you're going to get motivation is by perfectly executing this thing that you've had in your head since childhood or something like that. You can't really rely on that for motivation and it's just going to get in your way. So I recommend pick something newer and fresher that you don't feel that committed to getting exactly right. And if you do, then you will be rewarded by less barriers in your way. Um, you have to give yourself permission to do a bad job. It's not your job to do a perfect script in the very first try. So accept that and give yourself that permission and this will all just become much easier. So um, probably pick some new shiny fun idea that you think will just keep you interested and motivated for about eight weeks. And afterwards you can come back and revise it, etc. if you want to, but you are in no way actually required to. You can always just move on to the next one. Lastly, if you're going to stick around in the camp beyond just these in free intro sessions, we do ask that you change your username from a screen name to a real uh, name, your real name, ideally. You can't really use, you know, screen names in the industry. So it can be a nickname or something like that if you really want to, but after this class we can change your name for you or you can change it yourself, up to you. Um, but that is what we ask uh, for the later sessions. Don't worry about it for right now, though. So you probably want to pick a brand new idea or a big rewrite. We don't want to be picking something that is going to be a rewrite that is uh, you're just tweaking or moving uh, moving a couple things around. Don't do a polish in this class. You're looking for either a major overhaul or a brand new script that will just keep you excited and interested. You don't want to do true stories, anthologies, or adaptations, or anything that's just going to slow you down and require extra research. So probably don't do a historical unless you have some kind of understanding or basis in that time period already, or maybe that all you watch is westerns or something like that. So you've it wouldn't be that much extra research or work for you. So these are all just guidelines that are intended to help you finish a script in eight weeks. Not to write a perfect one, but to write, to have a script that is done. 
and then you will learn more by doing that again and again usually than you will by endlessly trying to get one right like if you're ever spending more than six weeks or six months on any individual script that you're not being paid for then chances are you need to change up your process and find a way to move on and move forward um so things to be aware of time travel just don't do it uh, b believe me trust me every time somebody takes that as a challenge and they regret it a lot it's hard to write a time travel script that all coheres and makes sense and you just don't want the majority of the notes that you get to be on things like wait what happened i don't get the basic events that occurred or about paradoxes or things like this you just don't want the readers to be racking their brains just to follow the story and it's so difficult to keep time travel straight, especially through multiple rewrites and drafts and characters, names changing and things like this. And to that same end, or by that same token, you'll want to be careful of things like anything with multiple copies of people. So clones, parallel universes, or stories that require complex interlocking flashback or timeline structures. You just don't want to probably have that extra layer, extra hurdle right in front of you before you get started especially if it's in your first couple scripts you just need to kind of get the basics down and find your feet before you start trying to do you know crazy stunts all over the field um so just something to think about something to watch out for um and uh, just maybe take a big swing pick some wacky crazy fun idea while building out those skills and fundamentals even if it's something that would never get made or maybe you think is kind of dumb but it's just funny <laughs> It's a, it's a nice time to pick something that will just be amusing or entertaining for you. So here's the five major phases or steps of this. We start with logline. That's that one sentence expression of what is the story about. Main character, inciting incident, main kind of primary action, obstacle in their path, time frame, and level of stakes. That's all kind of contained within the logline. We'll go much more into that today, and the second half of the class will be more focused on giving feedback to your early loglines. It doesn't have to be perfect today. You have two weeks after this before the next class. Next, we move up to Sketchbook, which is a blank, kind of like a collage or an unsorted document of all your ideas, influences, inspirations, um, and brainstorming for this project, inc including things like research materials, links, pictures, articles, documents, or anything else that you need to, that anything else that pertains directly to this one project. You don't want to be keeping all of your ideas in different folders and different files and things like that. So we're going to try to collect that all into a sketchbook, which is one definitive pre-writing document for your script, um, or is like the first and most essential pre-writing document. We then move ahead to story beats, which are a zoomed out version of the entire story from far away. It's going to be about 15 to 25 bullet points, taking up between one and three pages, depending on how much detail you include. Um, and it's going to be most of the major scenes of the movie. Next, we go to scene cards, where you're going to expand the story beats, these don't have to be physical, actual cards, but this is like a document that you're going to separate out into paragraphs where you're going to figure out every single scene. Not only what happens in the scene, but also the page numbers that you estimate that it will take place on, so you can keep track of your pacing and make sure that you are getting through the script properly um, with you know enough uh, time spent on the key moments. Um, your story gets started quickly enough, but doesn't drag its feet anywhere. Um, what else? So we go from scene cards to pages. So when we say go to pages, that means we actually start writing, formatting, writing scenes, writing dialogue, writing the actual script. So that would be a good time to get your Arc Studio or your Writer Duet or whatever other screenwriting software you want to use. And we, when we go to pages at week four, you'll be writing about 20 pages a week until the end of the class, which is January 26th, with extra time for holiday stuff. So you'll have plenty of time. And the idea is that you should try to write maybe four or five pages per weekday. Okay, so, um, script finished in eight weeks, right? Is it going to be good? No, it's a first draft, and if it's in your first, I don't know, dozen whatever scripts, several, five, ten scripts, I don't know how many... You, it's not going to be that great yet because you just haven't built your skills to where they need to be. But we need to move a little bit beyond the idea that any individual script needs to be good to have it be worth your time or worth doing or, or to have it like demoralize you if it didn't turn out exactly as you pictured. You need to kind of work on those things and look at moving on or moving to the next thing as another skill that you also need to work on as part of the craft. Um, if you're bringing a rewrite, I'm not going to do the discussion slide on it, but if you're bringing a rewrite, you're going to want to get your own feedback beforehand because the course doesn't include feedback of your last draft. So you do have to get your feedback all done by December 2nd. I'd recommend doing a swap 
a table read or something like that, if you really need to, and you need to ensure that somebody's going to read and pay attention, then there's all kinds of ways around the server to get your script read and to get people's opinions and feedback. So you do need to make a notes document on your own um, and collect all of the people's opinions, whether they've written them to you or whether they're giving them to you verbally, at which point you will have to actually type them up yourself. Um, we're not going to go super deep, deep into the steps of the rewrite at the moment because I just recently did two full classes on this. You can find both of them on our YouTube channel. And if you're watching on one of our other sites like Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, Discord, you should check out our YouTube if you want to find a really easy to navigate uh, directory of all of our previous live free public classes. Uh, okay, so what else? Um, we Before we begin, be prepared to hear lots of notes. Um, be prepared to get lots of feedback. This is not a solitary, quiet form of writing that you do on your own in your secluded basement far away from the world. This is a very social form of writing where you're going to be constantly in a sort of conversation and negotiation with everyone else that's involved in making the movie. You are not, you don't just turn in the script and that's it, or, or rarely is that the case, unless you get fired right away. Until you get fired, <laughs> you are the script department for a movie, meaning that you have to be an expert in the script front to back, including the drafts that have come before you and the next draft that is going to be in the can. So you have to be ready to make changes as the director, producers, leads, anyone else wants you to. You must keep everyone on the same page as to what has changed in the story and why and what's going to change next or you need to be able to find those times where you will be able to push back and say no that shouldn't change versus the times where you need to kind of be a little bit more adaptable and say things like yeah okay i'll see if i can find a way to make that work it's a it's a very social job that requires a lot of moving pieces a lot of social skills networking negotiation and conversations so if you, your idea of writing is I'm just going to lock myself in my attic and just just do all the writing and just turn, turn it in for the paycheck. It doesn't quite work that way. There's a lot that goes into this that needs to be practiced or seen firsthand, or you can learn about some of the basics in classes like this. But um, all you can do is write the best script you can and then practice skills like pitching, communicating, Addressing notes is a skill. Taking, receiving notes is a skill that you can also work on. So try to be thinking about, about that, how you can be using these courses, not just for learning how to organize your script, but also figuring out how to respond when people give you notes, how to get better at things like not being defensive or, or things like asking pertinent questions and not shutting down or not shutting, shutting the line of questioning down or not changing the subject or things like this. So just be practicing receiving feedback and implementing it because it's one of the biggest, most important skills of doing this. Your objective is not really to have written one perfect amazing thing. It's ultimately to become a generator of unlimited amazing things. So you're gonna to try to develop the skills necessary to execute these scripts consistently on a quick time frame between eight and 12 weeks with eight, eight is on the lower end, I do admit so. This course doesn't exactly represent a feature assignment, but it's pretty close. And then with a high level of quality or as high a level of quality as you can. We're not trying to write a great script in the course. Um, the goal is not write something amazing by the end of eight weeks. The goal is to write something that is finished and complete and makes sense and is coherent and you will have learned from and gained that practice and knowledge from so that your next one will be even better and your next one will be even better, etc. This is hard work. This takes a really long time. No one starts out good at this and it takes usually 10 years plus before you start even approaching the point of getting paid. I'm not going to go through all these sort of myths and assumptions and things like this. You can view these on the slideshow if you really want to, or in any of the previous classes where I've gone over them. But the uh, gist of this is you don't need any special training degree classes. Even this, you don't need to go to any classes like this. You just need to get your craft to a really high level and get really good at networking. If you can do both of those things, you don't need any in any degree or course or anything else. Um, but Communities like this are a great place to start doing that networking, start meeting people, start meeting potential collaborators or people to share work with and notes with and all this stuff. It's a good idea to start working on those things early. I'm not going to go through all this kind of boring stuff, how to be a feature writer. Um, 
you got to just focus on steps one and two. Uh, one, let's say one, two, and three before you even think about the other steps. So get really good at writing movies. Step two is actually go back and do step one because most people have not actually gotten that good by the time they think they're ready for the management. Um, you need to actually go back and really, really, really work on your craft. Um, and then whittle it down to a portfolio of three to five of your absolute best, unique, riveting, and incredible features. Um, ideally in kind of linked genres. They don't all have to be in the exact same genre, but they should kind of feel like they are in a family together. Like, if you're writing horror, then you could have thriller. And, like, I write horror, thriller, and action, right? Those all kind of go together in the same bucket, whereas if you're writing something like comedies and musicals, that would be a different portfolio um, for the most part. If you, if you have pilots as well, that would be, again, a different portfolio. So depending on where your interests lie or what it is that you're hoping to do, you'll have maybe a couple different sort of sub-portfolios within your same uh, larger one. But in any case, the point is that you're going to have about three of your absolute best scripts in that portfolio. You're going to do everything you can to submit them to fellowships, contests, lists, um, uh, readings, you know, any anything and everything that you can get um, and try to place highly in contests and fellowships like that if you can, or labs or workshops or anything else. You can also be doing things like self-financing and raising money and shooting short films and things like that we won't get as into the filmmaking stuff in this class as much as we will just kind of be focusing on story writing but we do have film camp community which in the future we do want to host filmmaking classes that will get more into the weeds on how to actually put the movie together but in any case let's just focus on writing right now so take steps one through three forget everything else until you spend many years doing that and you have about three amazing scripts that you have gotten really good feedback on Okay, do that first. <laughs> That'll take many years. Then once you do that, you're going to try to get a manager. Usually is the first option nowadays, or the first step. And you're going to try to place, use your high placements in contests and fellowships and things to send queries to the judges of those contests and try to get them to read more from you. That's just like the way that I got repped for the first time in 2017. So that works um, now. But the way people break in is changing all the time. So you can't always expect that that'll work exactly the same way nowadays. Once you get that manager, you're going to work with them. Go back and forth on many drafts of... It could be a couple different scripts until they have one they're happy with, they're ready to take out, as they say. Taking it out means sending it to their list of contacts with the intention of getting you meetings. Usually, you will you will send the scripts to people that will like it um, and want to meet with you, but not to buy that script. Those are called general meetings. Where And I've been on so many of these. I've been on, I think, three different rounds of general meetings over the years. Um, a lot of the time nowadays, these are over Zoom. Uh, they were. I was taking my third round of them during the pandemic, so maybe that is just why I think that. Maybe they're not, maybe they're more in person nowadays again. But in any case, uh, there's so much that's just Zoom and um, phone call based post pandemic in 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 Hollywood. Um, so you will take a script out and take a bunch of general meetings. Hopefully, you'll spark with one of the production companies or executive producers that you meet with, and you'll try to find an idea that they need a writer for. Maybe you can pitch on that idea, or they can hire you to write something else that they're working on. Or you just want to maintain those relationships, basically, because as eventually they will maybe need you, then you want them to know who you are, to have had a good conversation and left an impression on that person, so they remember you, maybe you send them a Christmas card, whatever it is. Like It's all the kind of networking aspect of this, where once you're in, you're still not in. You're not getting movies made. You just are repped in science. Like, I've been repped in science since 2017. I've never had a feature produced. Um, I've had three of them set up at production companies, but things fall through all the time. Or sometimes the whole industry goes on strike. Or any number of things can happen that will, you know, cause you to go back to square zero yet again. So you have to be prepared for this grind and this uphill battle that you will keep getting knocked down the hill, but you have to keep rolling the rock up the hill again and again and be very persistent and really persevere in order to get this. This is one of the hardest things in the world to do. It is easier to play professional sports in Major League Baseball, football, like NFL, that kind of stuff, it is easier to do those things statistically than to become a paid working feature writer. Um, eventually, you will set up a script. It'll sell. Once it sells to a WGA signatory, you'll be able to join the WGA, the Writers Guild of America, once you pay the dues, of course, which are kind of substantial. But then once you are in the guild, you then will be working for only guild minimums, which is a lot of money. And uh, you will be subject to all the protections of the, the union, the guild, that ensures that you will get health care and stuff like that, which is kind of cool. 
Um, this is hard for a lot of reasons. Um, getting good feedback is difficult. It's tough to gauge where your skill is at. Um, it's hard to find a community of peers. A script is a really long document that it's tough to discern the quality of from just a quick glance, and you sort of need to know what you're doing to be able to read and assess scripts really well. People have a really wide spectrum of reactions to even, like, go to your favorite movie on, on IMDb or whatever, Amazon, go to one-star reviews. There's going to be a bunch of people that hate that movie, so that applies to readers, too. That applies to everybody. There's a wide range of opinions, and because of that, combined with the fact that not everyone has the same level of expertise or interest or attention span or any of these things, it's hard to find people who can consistently read your scripts and give you good quality, actionable feedback. Um, it's just tough. And uh, that's one of the many difficult things about this. And at the end of the day, people who don't read scripts usually don't know what to look for exactly. And people who do read scripts are going to either charge money for coverage or they're going to be exhausted from reading scripts all day and sort of be predisposed to hating yours because they don't want extra work on top of the work they already get. So you're going to get a lot of the best feedback from swaps where you swap with another writer who, whose work you admire and you think they know what they're talking about a little bit at least and then you will be able to assess each other's scripts and trade that feedback with them within one week in the swaps that we do that's it's one week to get feedback which is faster than normal normally it takes people if people read a script at all it can take them up to a month or two months sometimes um so this is tough for many reasons but why would you want to write a movie well you want to be a professional hollywood feature writer maybe you want to be a writer director that's another potential route you can go, another reason you might want to do this. You want to make your own movies. You want to be M. Night Shyamalan or, um, you know, Greta Gerwig or any of these people that make, write, direct, and star, maybe even star in their own uh, stuff. This is a valid approach as well, the more kind of independent writer, director, filmmaker approach. And then maybe another reason is you just want to become skilled at the craft because you simply choose to. Uh, you want to write as a hobby for personal enjoyment. That's allowed as well. Um, but just keep in mind that since these are kind of the major options, there's a couple things that aren't on here. What's not on here? What's not on here is I want to write one movie and sell it. It doesn't really happen. That's like saying you want to play in just one NBA game. <laughs> it's like, well, you're going to have to play a lot of games to get to the point where you even conceivably could be on the court at the NBA game. I don't know if that's actually true. I don't watch sports or care about them at all. I think I've got this right in any case. You have to probably play a lot of games to practice before you get to the major leagues. Um, so it's not really a thing to just write one movie and sell it. Uh, you have to make this a significant sacrifice of time and work in your life. This takes a massive investment of time, effort, resources, brain power, energy, emotions. Um, it's not really a casual step to become a screenwriter. You can work on it in your screen time or in your spare time if you want to. You can you can write in just whatever time you have available to you. It's not to say you have to start doing this ten hours a day if you want to succeed at it, but it is to say. It's a long, long, long road, and it's a long uphill, uh, very challenging road with more obstacles being thrown at you at every stage, um, and you have to decide, I like this enough that those are not going to deter me, and that this is kind of all I can do, all I want to do. It's, you don't, that, it doesn't always have to be that way, but that is often the advice that is repeated, right? If there's anything else you can do, I recommend you do that. Instead, that's the advice because it's like, this is a slog. This is really difficult to start as a feature writer. The, the major reason to do it is because you're like, what else am I going to do? I have to do this. This is me. This is who I am. So if that sounds like you, then you're in the right place. If you're starting to think, maybe this sucks, and maybe I don't want to do this, then uh, there's plenty of other ways to spend your time. Plenty of less draining ways to spend your time. Um, so be prepared for hard work. This is not all fun. We're making a long road, but a master bricklayer doesn't care that much of whether any individual brick is a masterpiece. You just have to put the next brick down. You have to just focus on the next brick, the next script, and the next script, and the next scripts without worrying, oh, did I mess that one up? Oh, I'm too much of a perfectionist. These things will get in the way of you improving. Okay, so but you have a road to build, so you're still here. Let's get started. Let's make your sketchbook. If you've not already done this, go to Google Docs and just make a blank new document called Name of Movie Sketchbook, or it could, if you don't have a title for the movie, you could just call it, I don't know, uh, Rabbit Movie Sketchbook. You're doing a movie about a rabbit, call it Rabbit Movie, um, whatever it is. And at the top, you're going to include a couple fields. So you're gonna to wanna to fill these out as you have the answers to these, but if you don't have them today, just leave them blank. We have title, genre, logline, and comps. So we'll go more into each of these in detail, but title, I think we all know. 
what that means. And we all know it's also just totally fine to have a temporary placeholder title for now, if you are not sure. We have genre, which should be no more than two things mashed together. You can have something slash something else. You can have a sci-fi comedy. Totally. You can have an action romance. Sure. You can have a, um, you know, whatever. Anything you want. Any combination of things. Sci-fi horror. Whatever it is. But don't include more than two things. Because after two, it just starts to sound like nonsense. Um, and it starts to sound like, you know, the frozen yogurt place where you put the kiwis and the chocolate and the pineapple and the caramel. And by the time you get the ice cream, it's like, what even is this anymore? So try not to fall into that trap. Just limit yourself to two different genres. We have logline, which we'll be getting much more into, but that's the one sentence expression of the idea. What is this about? Whose story is this? What are they up against? Um, and then last we have comps. That's two other movies that you're saying your movie is kind of like this one meets that one. Um, there's not a super exact science to those, but try to pick stuff that is known to general audiences. You're not going to like, earn, you never earn points from comps that people haven't heard of. Um, and you're not, it's not a good place to show off and be like, oh, I'm going to pick this obscure Italian art house movie from 1967 as my comp. If you do that and the reader doesn't know the comp, you just, they will not, they're, they're not going to go out of their way to Google it. So you have to kind of uh, pick stuff that you think will be somewhat well known. So maybe stuff in the last 10 to 20 years that was kind of successful. You don't generally want to be comping unsuccessful flop movies unless there's some kind of really clear story reason why you want to do that or why that's like the, maybe in some cases that would be the perfect comp for you um but in any case uh try to pick things that are well known that are big hits if you can and that illustrate maybe you can think of it as maybe the world of the first thing but with the style the tone or the approach of the second thing that sometimes works There's, it's not actually the rule but you might think for instance we're gonna do um let's do like a creature feature set in a high school right so we're going to start, and like a comedic tone kind of creature feature. So we're going to start with Mean Girls. That tells me high school, comedic tone. And then I'm going to go with mm, Creature from the Black Lagoon or something like that, right? It's not new, but it's well known enough that everybody knows what that is. Everybody knows it's a movie about a woman that gets kidnapped by a fish monster, right? So that tells us that it's going to be a monster movie with a aquatic vi monster villain in the world of Mean Girls, which is high school comedy. So you can look at it that way if you want to. Um... If you just want to pick two things and see if they work together, that's fine as well. But just try not to confuse the audience with the comps. Okay, so fill out your sketchbook. Try to fill those things in as you learn what the answers are, or as you, maybe you already know what the answers are, and so you just need to fill out those fields. But when you paste in your logline today, you're going to include all of that. So title, genre, logline, comps. And that's going to help me assess what your intentions are for the script. So start filling that out now, if you've not already done that, and you want to try to get at least these four things down by the end of class if you can. They don't have to be finalized, but try to have something down for each of them. Okay, um, so we are going to go through each of these steps in turn, and in about 15-20 minutes you're going to share log lines for that early round of feedback and adjustment. Be prepared to hear something about it might need to change a little bit, or some suggestions of things that could change. We know it's early. We know it's a first draft. You don't have a lot of the details done yet. It's not supposed to be perfect right now. The questions and the guidance are just given whatever act, whatever information I have access to is all I can act on right now. So um, don't take it way too seriously. Don't take it as like, just because you get a lot of feedback on something doesn't mean your idea doesn't work at all, for instance. Um, rarely was, is somebody writing a movie that doesn't work at all. Sometimes, though. Once in a while, it does actually happen. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's um, continue to look at loglines. So more info on loglines. So this is going to do a couple things. One, it's one sentence. It's your story central conflict distilled down into this one sentence. So I'm going to let me move out of the way so you can read all these. We want to do a couple things. One, we're implying visual action and that this is a story about people doing stuff, not sitting around and thinking or discussing stuff. If we're sitting around and thinking or discussing, it had better be a courtroom drama because in a courtroom setting or something like that, the act of discussing and debating can be very dramatic. Um, if it's not that, then something is probably a little off. If the whole movie is just people sitting around discussing things, discuss discussion is a very non-dramatic 
term. It is a red flag for lack of adequate conflict. Um, so make sure your idea has conflict really, really baked into the essentials of it. We want to know what starts the story off. That's the inciting incident. So let's look at, before I move on, let's look at the template and then I'll go on to explain. So when or after inciting incident, that's the event that starts the story, an adjective protagonist must conflict before stakes. What does that specifically mean? So we are starting with the, it, the inciting incident is not the very, 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 very first thing to happen in a story. So it doesn't have to be that. It's usually about 10 to 15 minutes in that the event occurs that changes up your main character's normal day-to-day -day life. It throws a wrench in the gears and demands some kind of response from them. We call this the catalyst interchangeably sometimes with inciting incident. So your main character has an everyday normal life that around 10 to 15 pages in gets disrupted, interrupted, or threatened somehow. And now they have to react and respond with what follows, right? When this thing happens, your character must conflict, conflict telling us specifically what we're watching people do in this movie. So it shouldn't, shouldn't be a mystery what we are watching characters do on screen for the entire time. That should be very clear to us. Um, before stakes or ticking clock kind of tells us what is the, it could be a couple different things, right? So stakes are the thing, the or the combination of elements that are providing something that your character cares about. Like it's attack, it's tethering your character to the world of the story by saying if they don't act, if they don't accomplish their goal, this bad thing that they care about will occur. The stakes are sort of the answer to what is that bad thing. Um, if they don't go on this quest, well, the evil skeleton army will destroy the world. Okay, really high stakes in that case, right? Your stakes should be as high as possible for your genre, um, meaning it doesn't always have to be life and death, but if you're writing action or horror, it kind of does. Uh, if, it's not act if it's not life or death in action or horror, you have to have something way better. It's rarely possible. In any case, in something like, I don't know, a middle grade romance, it's a very different set of stakes, right? So the, it doesn't have to be life or death. We don't have to push your characters to the absolute extreme of human survival. But the biggest stakes might be something like, my boyfriend might break up with me if I do this wrong thing. Or how am I ever going to you know, keep my friends as we move to different colleges or something like that? Those might be really high stakes situations for your characters. And in any case, you do need to kind of highlight that in the logline because we need to know why they care. Because if they don't care, then we don't care. We, characters are like a vehicle for us to experience the story through. And unless your characters care about stuff, being threat, threat, we can't threaten or jeopardize them if they don't care about anything, right? And if we can't threaten or jeopardize them, they have no investment in the story. So write that down if you need to. When or after an inciting incident, an adjective protagonist must conflict before sticks. It, you don't always, always, always have to use that exact template. Um, it works well, and it's a good starting point, and it answers all the key questions. So you should make sure if you don't write it in that template, then at least you are basically answering or implying the answers to these questions, like what starts the story off, who is the main character, what are they doing in the majority of it, and then why do they care? What, what happens if they fail or if they don't act? Those are kind of the essentials to cover in a logline. I'm going to stop and take questions on this before I go into a little more detail. Are there any basic questions on just the shape and structure of an outline or of a logline? Luke, go ahead. before stakes or ticking clock, uh, what if the stakes, do the stakes necessarily have to be before? I mean, does before have to, I don't know. The, the question is trying to form in my brain and I just don't know the how to put it into English. Uh, uh, so, sometimes before, sometimes or else. Um, sometimes um, there's different ways you can, yeah, different like specific wording that you can use for the stakes. Yeah, definitely. Okay. I think that's pretty much what I was asking. Okay. Yeah, no, feel free. Find, find whatever variation you want on the specific wording, as long as you're answering the basic questions. Also, um, I noticed certain log lines have, like, in a world where blah, 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 sort of before the when inciting incident, if they have a very alien or 
strange setting. That's a good point. Um, yeah, so don't do that unless you absolutely have to, because it uses so many words, and also it requires a bit of brain power from your reader right off the bat, as now we're saying, okay, now you have to picture the whole world. Now that you have that picture of the world, let me tell you about the specific situation in that world. It just adds an extra step for them, so don't do that unless it's required for your story. But if it's something like sci-fi, it sometimes does really require that. If it's you know in a world where some fundamental law of reality works differently, we do need to usually know that. If it's like in a world where um, humans are delivered only by storks or something like that, that might be relevant enough that we it's part of the hook of your story in the first place, and we will need to know that. So yeah, you do have you can start with in a world where blank, if you must. All right, appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the questions. Any other questions on what we've talked about so far? Okay, let's go into purposes of logline. So this is for two main reasons. We write these for marketing purposes, to persuade people to read your script, to make it easier for people to talk about your script, and if you're gonna share pages with fellow writers, it helps them to be primed to first of all know if this is something that they would be interested in reading, or if it's a pro producer or something like this. The logline tells them if they would have the ability or interest in making a movie like this. The other thing is that uh, logline is a well, a super well-written, compelling logline is just a green flag for a well-written and compelling movie. So by doing this, you're creating a good first impression, which is really valuable and difficult to, you know, you can't do it twice. You only have one chance to make that first impression. It's like the handshake that gets you into the door. And then beyond that, it has writing purposes too. The purposes being... It's going to serve as a sort of compass during the outlining and writing process to help you stay on track and not drift too far from the original version of your idea and make sure that you are creating something that is cohesive and simple and packageable and taking full advantage of your premise. It's also just going to give you a head start on outlining because by writing a really well-formed blog line, you're going to know where some things are going to be falling in the story essentially right off the bat. So it's going to give you some of your key plot points even just at the very top of the writing process. And then you can always change the logline as you go, or once the draft is done, if you need to. So let's see how to figure out where things are happening based on just the logline. So this is how you can use the logline to start building out your picture of the plot. So when or after inciting incident, remember the templates, when or after inciting incident, an adjective protagonist must conflict before stakes. So inciting incident, that's your catalyst. That's happening around pages 10 to 15 in most modern specs. An adjective protagonist, that's telling us who your main character is usually at the beginning of the story, so it might tell us who they are in terms of an interesting limitation they have or tactic that they use, skill set that they have, or maybe something they're struggling with, something that makes them unique and specific and like conflicted, tormented, whatever it is, however we want to imagine that conflict is gonna stem from your character. We need to know how well your character either fits into or doesn't fit into the world, or we need to know how they seem suited or not suited for the journey that they are on. Um, for instance, a story where you start, it's a war story is a very different movie if you start about, if you start focusing on an incompetent cowardly soldier, or we could say maybe an inexperienced naive soldier, as opposed to a story that starts with a veteran soldier, right? Completely different arc for those characters. Um, so it's important that you pick that adjective carefully because you're illustrating who your main character is at the start. That is telling us what, what the journey that they're going on is going to be like. And that element, that idea of the journey is so key to understanding features. Almost always your first note, if it's not otherwise clear, is going to be, whose story is this? You see this note all the time. It's one of the worst notes to get because it indicates that something is really miscalibrated about just the very basic setup of your protagonists and plot arcs. But the question of whose story is this is something that you need to have the answer to. The answer is almost always one single person. Um, and it's uh, your their, their story can touch on others, and other people can, other arcs will intertwine throughout that story. But Western storytelling is very protagonist centric, very protagonist focused. So a group of teenagers is not a main character. A couple is not a main character. You have to pick who is the most important active person among these people, or not people. What if they're robots or bugs or whatever? You can make them whatever you want, but like pick the most active, interesting, like 
a way to think if you have a group of characters who's my main character often this people give advice uh look for the suffering who's suffering and struggling the most that is often going to be where the audience's sympathies gravitate in any case so you should kind of get ahead of that and think how can that be my interesting person and someone can be sympathetic or uh an underdog in many different ways right just because your character is good at something doesn't mean they're good at everything we can pick all kinds of interesting main characters that feel like they promise implicit conflict just in a way that presents in the logline itself and then last we have must conflict in order to stakes or in order before or in order to stakes or ticking clock um before or else maybe in order to yeah in order to is a good one so this is telling us what's happening in the middle of the movie and suggesting the kind of trajectory towards the end your protagonist's act two goal and obstacles should be clear here and this should basically tell us what we'd see on the poster or in the trailer he must fight his way out of a facility overrun by aliens okay i can easily imagine what the poster for something like that would be right um you might imagine also what is the worst possible thing that could happen in this world and so that when you've laid out what the stakes are he must you know take the amulet to the, the castle before um the evil wizard casts a spell to cover the world with snow so then we we know for instance that your all is lost moment is going to be either that the character has the main character has failed to prevent that wizard from doing that or it seems as if it's now inevitable that that wizard will pull that off right so you can imagine the all is lost moment taking place around pages 65 to 75 ish of, of your script so you now you have that and you know what that is just from a well-written logline and then you might think the consequences of that moment for instance or the worst outcome the writer can imagine if the all is lost moment is the worst outcome the character could imagine now we lost obi-wan we lost gandalf i i broke up with my significant other how could i possibly win after that by adequately outlining what the stakes are you're telling us what are the consequences of the or you're sort of suggesting or implying for us um what your character will fall victim to in their darkest moments of the sort of all is lost this time where they seem to lose or be on the track to losing uh, around two-thirds of the way through your movie working up towards that break into three so you don't need to really worry about this too much right now if you're early on because these are all plotting stuff this is all plotting stuff for later when you're going into story beats i would worry about this so in two weeks from now i would think more about it but for right now just focus on getting a really strong log line down then this is just sort of telling you you can later use that log line for a lot of different purposes including building out your story okay let's talk sketchbook i have a question in the chat all is lost is same as midpoint right no very different so midpoint is directly halfway through the story um all is lost is a structural beat that follows escalation which is after midpoint so it goes midpoint escalation all is lost it's about 25 to 30 pages after midpoint for the most part um and it's going to be if midpoint is a an escalation of the stakes all is lost is that moment where your character seems as if now they are on the road to failure and defeat maybe they believe they've already lost or maybe they have already lost um all right so sketchbook there's no right or wrong thing to include in the sketchbook it's a place to just collect all your notes and sketches and ideas as you develop the story flesh out the characters come up with possible names for all your characters or themes or ideas for moments throughout endings snippets of dialogue research images links documents or anything else that you need to inspire you or provide information for your story as you go through it Um, let me just sh briefly show you one of mine. So I'm going to include at the top genre logline and comps, and then sometimes a picture, just because I like to include a picture at the top. And then um, on the next couple pages, I have like ideas for all the different characters, a couple pictures, a map of like this was a movie that took place all on an apple orchard. So I picked up a map of a Southern Virginia apple orchard, um, which is exactly where my script was set. And therefore, I could kind of understand the relationship between where all the different buildings are and things like that. So it's uh, useful if you if you need just that kind of, you know, maps, charts, video links, articles. If your script is set in a different time, place, location, culture, or anything else, then it's worth doing that research and including that in the sketchbook as well. And then um, underneath that, I've gone into story beats and scene cards. I can show you what scene cards look like if you want to look ahead, but we're not really doing this today. You can see that a scene card is basically just a name of a scene 
the page numbers that it takes place on, and about two or three paragraphs of text informing us what happens in that scene. Don't worry too much about that now, though. We're just working on sketchbooks at the moment. So um, let me check to see any questions on sketchbooks or log lines. Okay, if there's no questions, then I want to, hmm, do I want to look ahead at these things, at the process? Um, I will go over just a couple last elements of logline, I think. I'm not going to get into structure and scene cards today. Um, what I want to do is go into what are readers looking for in loglines, and maybe show you a few of mine if you want to see, and then we will post and share. So get ready to post and share those within the next 10 minutes or so. But wait till I call for it, or else they might get lost in the shuffle. We might have a question from Oz. Go ahead, Oz. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Go ahead. Excellent. There was a good question in the chat um, about, is all is lost is the same as the midpoint? Is that correct or not correct? OK, sounds good. Thanks. become aware of what has occurred uh, in in that moment. Um, it's usually best if they are just there um, and they can see it with their own eyes. Like, gosh, remember when Gandalf falls off the into the mines of Moria? Frodo has this huge reaction and they go outside and Sam and Merry and Pippin are all so devastated. You can really feel that all is lost moment. Now that we've lost the mentor, how on earth could we succeed is sort of the feeling for it. Good question, though. Um, any more questions? Stefan says, Mac and iPhone users, Apple has an app called Freeform, and it's great for sketchbook. You can write, put images, index cards, and it's automatically cloud-based and free. Okay, sure, there you go. So there's another option for you if you want to use that for your sketchbook. Normally, when you're sharing documents on SkillCamp servers, though, I recommend either Google Docs or PDF link. Um, and I'm sure from that, from Freeform, you can export PDFs probably. Um, but just anything else can feel a little fishy to people, so it's best to stick to those two formats when sharing. Uh, thanks for the recommendation, though. So, um, okay, let's go into last things on log lines. So hopefully you're filling out your title genre comps and you're getting ready to paste those. So we're looking for high stakes with and stakes and conflicts that are in some way really primal and understandable by almost anyone. So that means things like love, survival, revenge, stuff like that. Log lines also imply the size of a story, so try not to write a log line that feels like a TV show or miniseries, or too small, which would be something like a short film or a comedy sketch or something like that. If it's just about a guy trying to get uh, Snickers from a vending machine, that doesn't really sound like a full feature idea. We have a question from Joyce. Go ahead, Joyce. So Joyce, you're on the stage. You'll just have to unmute your mic.
sorry, I can't find the uh, chat area. I can hear you now. Go ahead. Uh, I can't find where I'm supposed to post my log line. Oh, okay. Um, so on the left-hand side of your Discord window, do you see a voice channel called Classroom that we're in right now? Yes. Mouse over that, and you'll see a small white word bubble. When you click that, it should say Open Chat. Oh, thank you. No problem. Was that your only question? Yes. Okay, thanks, Tris. Last questions? Okay, so um, I could go on and on about what a log line should look like and all these rules and fiddly things. I think we better just post them. So go ahead and share what you have, and I'll take them in the order that we get them in. You know, yeah, forget all this. Comps, execution, dependent, high concept, who cares? Let's see the log lines. Um, and then I'll give you the feedback. And you can start revising it today if you want to. You have two weeks before the next class, so you have plenty of time to get the essentials down. Okay. I'll get through as many as I can. If I do not get to yours, or if you have more questions, and if you remember, we do have um, lab tomorrow. Lab is like office hours you can go to. Uh, any and every um, member has access to off the, these office hours. And you can ask whatever questions you want and bring up to five pages of anything, anything you're working on for feedback, which would obviously include log lines and outlines and things like that. Okay, um, so looks like we got a bunch of them to go through. So I'm just going to get started. Let's start with Dakota with Life with Fritz. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? Doing great. Welcome. Thanks for joining. Looks like we've got an action adventure movie. Why don't you read this out for us? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm reading the wrong one. You wrote dra a drama. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Other thing. No, you're good. Sure. Yeah. When his comeback is threatened by a newcomer, a has-been cartoon star must secure the lead role in the first adult animated film before he fades into obscurity. The comps are Fritz the Cat or Easy Rider and then the 1954 version of The Star is Born. Okay. Interesting. Very unique, certainly. I mean, I've almost never seen a modern spec where all the comps are before 1975. Um, you, you, can, you can do it. It's just like... Uh, it, it grabs attention, certainly. I'm just like, there's not a single movie from the last 50 years you could have comped in any of these. Uh, mm -hmm. might, it's not that big a deal, but just if you get to the point of sending this to producers or people, they probably want at least one modern comp. Maybe you can just use the modern Star is Born. Sure. It is set in 1970, though, so that's kind of I see. why. Okay. Um, let me read it again. So, when his comeback is threatened by a newcomer, a has-been cartoon star must secure the lead role in the first adult animated film before he fades into obscurity. Um, what's a cartoon star? Like a voice actor? No, as in an animated, like, i.e. Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, this is animated. Oh, it is? Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, how do we know mm -hmm. that? Um, you should probably that say... Is Animated. I have a question. Yeah, maybe say animated in the... I mean, I realize right. it's not really a genre, but in any case, that does completely change the story. Mm -hmm. um, when mm -hmm. you say a has-been cartoon star, I think a voice actor, or maybe a cartoonist. Um, what you mean mm -hmm. is a Roger Rabbit kind of guy. Yeah. Okay. So a has-been cartoon. Right. Okay. Um, maybe be a little bit... Um, clear about that like this is a cartoon person in a fantasy world um mm -hmm. it might like maybe fantasy dramedy would be an okay way to it, it depends how much kind of crazy stuff you have going on in any case let, let me read through it one more time all right so his comeback is threatened by newcomer it has been cartoon act i guess cartoon actor basically is what you're saying actor. right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um must secure the lead role in the first adult animated film so is this in a world where there are not other adult animated films? Um, not at this time, no. Because so that, that, that was film was Fritz the Cat. That was Fritz the Cat, was the very first adult 
Yes, today. the first one that that was like that actually made a difference in animation. Yes. And you've comped Fritz the Cat as one of your. Mm-hmm. So does that mean the story of that movie is kind of like this, or just? Yes, it is. It's so it's so 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 it's about the quote casting production of it. Oh. That's. Yeah, that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Wait, so yep. you're, you're using kind of licensed characters that have already been created by other people? No, no. It is it is a retelling of how this movie got made. A retelling? Yeah, it's a retelling of the actual of the production of Fritz the Cat. What? But how is it a retelling <laughs> if you're using cartoon people? It's an animated retelling. It's it's a fictionalized retelling of it. I don't know if I. Get it's it. like, so it so so you know how in BoJack Horseman how John Steinbeck is a character. Mm-hmm. It's that. It's it's that. So Ralph Bakshi, who is a real person, is a character in this. They're making this movie. But isn't the whole premise that this is the first... Well, so, hang on. So is everyone a cartoon in this or not? Yes. Everyone's a cartoon. Yes, everyone. Yes. But you say it's the first adult animated film. Yes. Wouldn't every adult movie be an adult animated film in this world? Not in the sense of... it's. It uses the same logic as, like, so... You have animated films that are made for kids, and then you have animated films that are made for adults. It is, it's not, it, it, you, you kind of have to suspend the belief that it works the same as how it actually is. What it is, it's a, this is, everybody's a cartoon, and this is the, fictionalized retelling of how Fritz the Cat, which is the first adult animated film, got made. How it was made. That's what this is. But in a world where everyone's animated, you're saying you also have characters that are cartoons even within a world where everyone's already a cartoon? Yes. What? I don't get it. <laughs> How is that? It doesn't compute. What are you talking about? You have everyone's a cartoon, but you're saying within the world, some of these cartoons are also extra cartoons? What? So think of if think of how in Roger Rabbit, how you have all of these characters doing normal jobs. Mm-hmm. So you have that, but you also have cartoons quote quote actors so if you were doing it so if bugs bunny were doing what bugs bunny does then bugs bunny would be an actor in this okay but alongside well so yeah in roger rabbit there's regular humans and there's cartoons they're like two separate species right yes right is that the case in your world too no (laughs) <laughs> yes yes and no so like it's it's weird because what do you mean by cartoon do you mean cartoon in the sense of bugs bunny or do you mean cartoon in the sense of like how it just so happens to be um that does it work in the sense of like animated everybody is a cartoon in in this in this or is it like it it's weird to because Cartoon is a kind of weird generic term, so I'm I, I, I'm I'm trying to understand what you mean when you say cartoon, because it it can mean different things to different people. So I'm I'm trying to understand what you mean by when you say cartoon. What is a cartoon? <laughs> to you. <laughs> a cartoon is an animated character that's not portrayed by a oh. live action actor. Then everyone is a cartoon. 
in this. Every th this is fully traditionally animated kind of thing. So then, in, in that case, would you not just say like a has been actor must secure the lead role in the first adult film before he fades into obscurity? Possibly. Because it's not even animated in the world, or is it? I can't quite understand that. Um, but uh, yeah. Like, you're sort of saying it, there's live-action movies in an animated world in addition to cartoons in an animated world, which just doesn't make any sense. Um, uh, <laughs> I, I'm really struggling with the basics of this one. Um, and beyond that, just, before he fades into obscurity is such a kind of, like, nebulous set of stakes in the first place. Um, I think that you might want to more clearly define a ticking clock or some like actual more tangible concrete um finish line for your character um if you can if you have something a little bit more specific than just well you know he will be less popular than he was before like is there a chance he'll be ejected from the hall of fame you know what i mean something like that they're gonna chip his hollywood star off the walk of fame or something like some tangible representation of fading into obscurity if you can find that that might be a little bit of a stronger motivation sure that makes sense okay so that's just this is th oh, this is the hardest thing to th this was this has been hard to figure out because how do you how do you figure out how to tell this tell the story of how fritz the cat was made in an animated way and not confuse people <laughs> like i <laughs> that's the that that's this is the difficulty that i've yes, been having that's the trick for a long time <laughs> so okay. well, you were not the first weeks. person to be confused so <laughs> you've, you've got a couple weeks to hammer on the log line if you want to i wanted to answer any questions that you might have had before we move on um no not really this is you know makes total sense with what you're saying and you know i get it <laughs> so, so totally get it appreciate it my, my recommendation would be probably just when his comeback is threatened by a newcomer a has been actor like just almost pretend the movie's not animated like obviously you it, uh -huh. it you have you say it's an animated dramedy right there but just sort of treat it like it's you know bojack horseman or something like that right where just say a has been actor must secure the lead in a, in, a, in an adult film before this specific bad thing happens. I think that might be a less confusing way to present it. Good idea. I like that. Thank, Thank you so you. much for volunteering. Hope that was useful for you. Okay, um, let's keep going. We've got way more to get through. We're just gonna go right in order. So we'll go to Stefan, Once Upon a War. Hey, yo. Hello. All right, here's our action adventure for the evening. Why don't you read out what you've got here? Okay, so the title is Once Upon a War. Logline is this. Discharged army recruit gets a second chance D day assignment. Babysit a group of eccentric celebrity war correspondents led by Ernest Hemingway. But when they get stranded behind enemy lines and stumble upon evidence of a Nazi super weapon, he must take this motley crew of unlikely heroes on a daring commando raid. Comp is basically midnight in Paris meets Mission Impossible. Okay, wow. Some unique comps there. Um, interesting. Thank you for that. Let me read through it again and make sure I understand. Okay. A discharged army recruit. What's an army recruit? A soldier? Uh, yeah, basically. Okay, I would just say a soldier then. Gets a second chance D-Day assignment. I'm not sure what a second chance D-Day assignment is. Uh, you're just sort of saying this is his job that he's given on D-Day? Uh, no, basically what happens is, and this is where I'm struggling with the logline, his dream, his whole life was to be a soldier and like to, you know, to volunteer, to do his duty, etc. And then right as World War II begins, he gets medically discharged from the army and his dream gets crushed because of it. And uh, after that, he gets kind of a second chance at glory, where he gets to babysit a group of these pompous idiots. But then stuff escalates and he gets to experience war. Okay, so this is supposed to be like an easier job for him because he has some kind of medical problem that 
this they think yeah 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 basically just part. stay in the back and do nothing but then sh shit happens okay and they get stranded behind enemy lines and stumble upon evidence of a nazi's super weapon he must take his crew of unlikely heroes on a daring commando raid okay um couple of questions is this a comedy uh it has its it has funny moments but it's more of an adventure okay because just the tone seems kind of light um just in the sense that you're saying we have a bunch of celebrity war correspondents that we need to lead on a commando raid kind of has like a tropic thunder kind of vibe to it um, but the, your comps didn't really feel that they were very comedic. And Midnight in Paris uh, is moreover kind of a strange comp to pick in the first place for this, for a war movie, right? That's a Woody Allen fantasy dramedy, isn't it? Yeah, but it has the basically the same characters that I do. That's why I picked it as a comp, because it has that element of using Ernest Hemingway, F. Scott Fitzgerald, etc. as characters in the movie. So basically, I, I take characters from Midnight in Paris, and then I put them in a Mission Impossible type of situation. But isn't doesn't Midnight in Paris involve, like, magic and time travel? Uh, yes. Yes, it does. Yes, so it's not the right comp for this. You're leading the audience down the wrong direction. Um, you should pick something more like Monuments Men, maybe? I, that wasn't even a very successful movie, but that is a... Yeah, that's a kind of bad movie. movie. Yeah, maybe you know about it. Um, so... Uh, yeah, if you're, if you're picking, if you have an explicitly historical or realistic story, don't pick supernatural comps. It's not a realistic story. Sorry? It, it's not a realistic story. Oh, it, uh, uh, wait, you're saying there is supernatural elements in this movie? No, but it's not what actually happened. Like, none of that happened, obviously. That's and, uh... Fitzgerald was dead by 1940 and he's alive in this story when it's 1944. That's why it's called Once Upon a War because it has the fairy tale element of alternate history. Okay, but regardless of that, just don't pick a supernatural comp if there's no supernatural elements in the story. Okay, yeah, yeah gotcha. I won't. Um, okay, so you're going to want to first of all make this one sentence. Um, and probably make it clear why the soldier was discharged because soldiers can be discharged for lots of reasons um you're going to want to because like that's important for your character's motivation right he's been so yeah. a, a soldier with medical problems is given an easier assignment uh babysit these war correspondents then he needs to lead them on a commando raid you can do that in one sentence i'm sure you can yeah probably can okay so try to put that together if you can when they get stranded behind enemy lines and stumble on evidence of a Nazi super weapon. So yeah, maybe start the log line a little bit later. Um, maybe something like, um, uh, well, that might actually be a little misleading if you put the inciting incident right up front. My, my first thought was something like, you know, when his squad of war correspondents stumbles upon evidence of a super weapon, a blank soldier must blank and blank. Maybe see if you can try it a little bit like that. See if it doesn't throw people way too off. Um, but that would just be a nice way to sort of condense everything. So you're going yeah, to yeah, absolutely. condense yeah. the information here as much as you can. Um, I think I basically get it, though. I mean, you have a. Uh, I can see the arc of the character. Um, the, the premises of having a bunch of kind of celebrity correspondence is kind of interesting. Can I ask, were they celebrities at that time? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So there George Steinbeck, it's Gerald Hemingway. Hemingway already wrote For Whom the Bell Tolls. And both Steinbeck and Hemingway, they were actually war correspondents in World War II. So that part is actually true. Okay. And there were they there during the, the D-Day. Okay, and, and they were being treated as celebrities at the, at the time too? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. Um... Yeah, I think I get it. I like the setup. I like the arc. Just condense the information. Try not to spread out the information so much. Um, and yeah, then... I'm, I'm struggling with that. I've been struggling with that for weeks, trying to condense it into like one clear sentence. Yeah, it's tough. Trying to get to the essence of the story. Yeah, so my, my thought is probably just start it late. Start it something like when his group of... Uh, when the group of journalists... When the group of celebrity journalists he's escorting stumble upon blank, start try starting with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I'll start straight away. Thank you, Connor. Thank you. Let's keep it going. We have uh, Charlie with Hey Zeus, a comedy. Come on up on the stage, Charlie, if you're there. I am here, yes. All right, hello. Can you read out what you have for us, please? Um, yeah, the title is called Hey Zeus. It's a feature film. The genre is comedy, and my logline is, the world conspires to sidetrack a group of small-town friends journeying to the Forest Fortuna Festival as an epic send-off for their friend Zeus. And my comps are Road Trip and uh, Meets Year One, kind of. Meets Year One? What year is yeah. this in? Um, it's present day. <laughs> okay. Um, why, why, the, I, I chose year, year one just because of the, the religious satirical elements. Oh. Um, because, the, yeah, it's called Hey Zeus, and there's, it's religious satires just, like, woven through the whole thing. But it's kind of like um, like road trip, essentially. But, again, it has those religious satirical elements as you're going through sure. um so i kind of have it yeah set up like he's the jesus character in the group like he's like earnest and he's meek um and his friends <laughs> yeah exactly it's yeah funny. It's um, funny. i like that so it's a yeah it's just like a twist on all of those tropes I and think, um i think that year one just is again like in the last it's just giving the reader the wrong idea right off the bat, though. Because, okay. So maybe okay. maybe something like "Oh, brother, where art thou?" I know that's still not modern day, but like, uh, does that is that the sort of vibe you're going for? Where it's like that's almost that is a road trip movie, basically. Have you seen that one? I have. Yeah, I like that one with Clooney. Um, it's it's that would probably work, actually. Um, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so also set in the 1930s, not modern day, but I just feel that it has it's more like picking something that's set in it's it's literally called year one that's like kind of telling the audience <laughs> okay this is going to be a historical when it's not a hist and you also say their friend is zeus so do you see how if you say it's year one then i'm thinking is he actually zeus or what's going on there but it is, right, it is right okay and realistic and and okay that's just their motivation all right let's go to yeah. the, <laughs> the basic mechanics of the logline itself the world conspires to sidetrack so we need who's the main character here um, Zeus is the main protagonist, but he's kind of inactive for uh, the beginning of the story. Again, he's like meek and earnest and like the nice guy of the group, which is why they want to do something nice for him. And so they kind of like take him on this trip and all of these things kind of happen to them. And then throughout the story, he um, progresses and comes out of his shell a little bit more. Wait, well, you say it's a send off for him. Does that mean he's dying? No, he's leaving. So it's like a, they want to do uh, have a big party or like have some big epic event or um, they're essentially going to like a festival, almost like a Burning Man festival. But I made up this one for the specific time of year. It's the summertime. Um, okay. So I'm calling it the Force Fortuna Festival because Force Fortuna, you know, it's like Lady Luck summertime, like almost like a summer Saturnalia party in the desert, basically, is the setting. And um, they want to go, so they're like, "Hey, we'll do this for Zeus before he leaves." Okay, but so you putting him in at the end makes it sound like this isn't his story, and I kind of almost thought he was dead or something when you say that it was a send off <laughs> for him. Um, so you want to okay. put the protagonist at the beginning of the logline, not at the end of it. Okay. So and also don't start with the the world. Start with the character. So. Okay. I, under I understand that you mean things are various things go wrong on the road trip, um, but we would so like you kind of have it backwards. So start with the inciting incident. So first of all, when he gets a job in I don't know Korea, you know, like a main. So that would kind of be the thing that starts off the story, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, the inciting incident would yeah it would be the job or or college yeah which I haven't decided on yet. Okay. So um. yeah, when you know <laughs> yeah. something calls Zeus or what however you I'll, I'll just write it <laughs> like you wrote it there when something calls Zeus away overseas whatever it is. Um. 
it sort of seems like you're saying that his friends are the one that set up this party, not him. So what is your main character trying to do? Um, again, so he's kind of like, he's almost like the inactive protagonist in the beginning. He mm-hmm. gets this job and his friends are like, hey, we should do something. And someone's like, hey, there's this festival. Why don't we all go and do that as like the send off mm-hmm. for this friend? Um, and he is kind of, again, he's like meek in the beginning, like, oh, I don't know if my dad will let me go or if I, if I can do that. Um, and then essentially from there, the hijinks ensue, like they lie about where they're going, the, the, the way that it's set up. Um, they're living in Nazareth, Pennsylvania, and um, they're in the garage talking about wanting to go and do this. And dad walks in. And he hears them talk about going to a party in Nazareth. And so he gives them the keys to his car, not realizing it's in Nazareth, Texas, where they're going. And so like, it, all of that just starts to set up. And I'm tying in all those like religious themes as I'm trying to like set up and pay off all these hijinks that will ensue, um, referencing like biblical sit, um, scripture in a satirical way your main character gain agency in the story and and how does he become more active um as things start happening at first he's like a victim of circumstance until there's a point where um it's not just happening to them as a group something happens to him and then that's when his agency kicks in and he comes into his own and he becomes a little bit more um extroverted and he stands up for himself in the group he just he has this internal growth due to external circumstances like during this trip it might be external circumstances that allow him to access this stuff in, in, from himself but it, it really it should be your character that is changing and it's not just like a co- it's not just like things happen to arrange in such a way that it seems like they've changed they should actually be changing somehow in any case, mm-hmm. I would probably recommend a little something like this. Maybe more like, dragged along on a road trip to his own goodbye party, an adjective protagonist must blank and blank. And that way you can sort of suggest he's not active at the start, he's dragged along for the trip, but then he has to take charge and what, guide them to safety? Maybe is he the one that then has to save everyone or ensure they survive? Or he's, he's trying to become, uh, you know, follow the path of Jesus, I guess, right? Or he's going, he, is, is that kind of his arc where he, he's going to try to become more charitable and become a better person? Well, he's already a good person. He just doesn't have, like, any type of gravitas or anything. And throughout the trip, as things happen to them, they kind of pick up people along the way. Like, people are inspired by his earnesty and his generosity and, like, oh, he tells the truth and he's really nice. And he ends up, like, essentially picking up people you could call them apostles along the way and they end up in this desert with him at this festival okay maybe something try something like an adjective protagonist must step up and save his friends slash i don't know entourage followers whatever you want to say um and maybe you could be a little bit more specific um like uh save his friends by you know guiding them through the desert or the wilderness to a music festival something like that we may not need too much too many details like i don't think we need to know the name of the festival i don't think that really matters that much especially if they don't even get there until the end right um so no they they get there in time (laughs) at the end of the movie or when in the movie um it's yeah it's right before the end of the movie it's yeah within the third act they arrive okay if it's something that only comes up in the last like 20 minutes then you usually just don't mention it in the log line um but okay in, in any case so yeah I, i'm thinking something like this you know dragged on the road trip to his goodbye party and adjective protagonist must blank and blank you know specify how he becomes active or what his concrete goal is guide his friends through the desert to safety something like that okay Even if that's a little reductive, even if the movie involves more going on than that, or there's a bigger cast of characters, et cetera, et cetera, you just need a really basic one-sentence expression of, when this happens, your main character must blank before blank. And okay. when you say, guide them through the desert to safety, we don't have to then say, or else they'll die of thirst, because that's kind of implicit in saying, guide them through the desert, right? So you can always imply All right. some parts. of it. You don't have to explicitly answer every question. Let me take any questions that you have, and then we will move on 
Um, questions that I have. Um, okay, so it is in like the third act that they do arrive. Um, but essentially, they make it in time for the festival, and he's not. He does save one friend, but that um, he doesn't really save them. Like they make it to the party and um, he's picked up all these people along the way. And then he has this like, I guess want to say like come to Jesus moment basically at the festival. And it just culminates in the goal is like arriving to the festival for the party. Um, And he gets determined to do that after all these things start sidetracking them. So that's when he becomes um, an active protagonist. Like he gets his agency when all this crap happens to make sure that they don't arrive. He becomes like, hey, we're, we dealt with all this stuff. All these things happen. Like, we're going to make it to this festival. Um, and they get there. And it's not like it's wrapping up or anything. Like, they make it there in time to participate in the festival. Okay. Was there a question? Um, would that alter the way that the log line would be structured then? Um... I don't think so. I, that sounds like the pretty much the same. I mean, the only thing that I, the only slight difference I'm sensing is I was specifically, I thought what you were saying was that their lives are then kind of in danger because they're lost in the desert, perhaps. And that's why he has to, he's motive, like, yes, he's trying to get them to the festival, but the more important, the more weighty element of that is, or else we will die, right? Like, that's the part where we're trying to guide them to safety, like Jesus leading his followers through the desert or, or whatever. Um, so if you're explicitly saying that there's no danger of death and that's what was seeming off to you, then you will have to find some other stronger motivation for your main character. Just wanting to okay. get to a festival is not very strong motivation. Um, whereas I thought it was working well. You're saying he's dragged along at first, but then they need him and he must become, he has to change and step up in order to, like that just seemed like a clearer arc to me. If you're saying the arc isn't exactly that, you'll just want to kind of imply what it really is. Okay. Hope that helps. Yes, thank you. I like the idea. It's a funny uh, premise. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Okay, uh, a couple more. Luke. Is it a Christian camp-based movie? Who could have guessed? Yeah. Um, I still don't have a good title for this one, or a better title than the, the working title. Okay. Why don't you read out what uh, you got? An over-exuberant evangelist and a squad of campus crusaders must battle demons to stop the staff of a summer Bible retreat from spreading a satanic RPG in a plot to destroy 1980s America. <laughs> and there's there's too many cooks in the kitchen, I already know. Uh, and I feel like it doesn't have enough promise of horror in the logline either. Battle but it's better... It's better than the one I had before, anyway. Okay. Um, I'm a big horror fan, a huge horror comedy fan, and I still haven't heard of mm, half of these. Uh, you probably want to stick with stuff that an average reader would know. All right. So, like, Evil Dead. Um, yes, everybody, every horror fan knows Evil Dead. Um, sure. Skullduggery? I don't quite know what that is. Sleepaway Camp would probably be the number two, then, or, yeah, like, okay. Red Hot American Summer. Okay, yeah, maybe then Sleepaway Camp meets Evil Dead too. That could that could work. Sure, with a with a Christian twist or something like. <laughs> can we put like a third? Uh, I don't know. Three comps is probably too many. It's too many, but if you can think of a better camp movie, or like, is there if there's a specifically religious camp movie that you can comp, maybe you could use that. One. Um, not one that's slasher based. Uh, maybe I think Saved involves a summer camp okay um Up to what you. year did that that's that's not a, that's not a movie most people have seen though that's all right yeah just do some thinking on it maybe do some do some research there an over exuberant evangelist and a squad of campus crusaders must battle demons to stop the staff of a summer bible retreat is the over exuberant evangelist a member of the staff Yes, they're well. They're like junior employees or whatever. They're like counselors. Um, 
they're basically volunteers. Like they, they don't get paid, but they, they work there. Um, they're not the, the senior staff though. Okay. Then in that case, I mean, like if you could then pick a, just a different adjective rather than over exuberant evangelist, you, you've kind of picked two words without telling us what the person's actual role is. Right. So if they're sure. like a junior counselor or something like that, maybe uh, like a, what's a good word for super, in, a devout junior counselor? See what I mean? Something like that? Um, it's not exactly the adjective. I'm trying to say he's um, overly chipper and how do you, insufferable? How do you say that? I don't know. In any case, okay. the important part to me was that he works at the camp, but is not a, All right. a camper there. And a squad of campus crusaders. That would be other counselors, or are those kids? They're all kids. They're uh, like high school kids that work at the camp, they but they're not. Yeah. Uh, m must. When you say battle demons, what does that mean specifically? Uh, so there's demonic possession, like Evil Dead Two style, in the uh, first part in like Act Two. And then there are, like, literal demons from hell that, like, come through a portal in the finale. Uh, so... Um, but, but that's not till later? That's at the very end. But yeah, there's, like, battling demons is a, is a thing. It's like uh, Evil Dead 2. If the... Um, what are they called? Ne uh, Deadites? What are the... Say that again? Deadites. Deadites, yeah. So the Deadites are kind of possessed by ancient spirits or pagan deities or demons or whatever. Um, it's kind of the same idea, but literal demons in this case. And What was the inciting incident, though? Oh, uh, the inciting incident? Um, that's a good point. Um, it would have to be... Um, I guess the inciting incident is just the, you know, starting the the trip at the, the they're starting their their job as counselors at the camp basically um are you sure i had it am i sure i'm not 100 percent sure but um where would i start in media res sort of during summer camp well yeah. it would it would seem to me it would be something like when they stumble across evidence that their counselors are summoning demons you know what i mean are you talking about the catalyst yeah what are we Okay, yeah, that's the catalyst. They, uh, uh, basically, the, the the playing of the the tape or the the finding of the evidence, the stepping through the the secret cellar, whatever it is, whatever I come up with. Okay, so in that case, uh, when a devout junior counselor, whatever you want to call it, and a squad of campus crusaders discover that the staff of their Bible retreat are demon summoning cultists they must exit i would kind of take i it guess from there yeah i guess it would be they would discover the staff are uh involved with this rpg if the rpg is going to be a major element in the story it should yeah. probably be is the it... inciting incident in what way is Say that again? Element? um it's kind of like the MacGuffin. it's uh have you seen a horror movie called the stuff uh, uh, I've seen the poster for it. It's kind of a goopy movie. It's an yeah, it's a product movie. that is going to take over the world, basically. That's what this game is. It's a product that is going to corrupt the youth and indoctrinate them into the Church of Satan and summon the Antichrist and usher in the apocalypse, basically. That's what this, this like Milton Bradley uh, product is supposed to do um, okay. in the story. And they're making and distributing it from the camp? Um, pretty much, yeah. This is sort of like ground zero. I don't know if they're manufacturing it here, but this is sort of like where they're going to summon Satan, basically. Uh, okay. At Devil's Light. Uh, of course. Okay, so yeah, what I would say is start us off with the inciting incident. So when we discover that blank is the problem, your characters must now blank before blank. So find that specific course of action that, or plan or method tactic that they're going to use 
um, you say they battled demons. It's just not super specific, nor did I understand yet where the demons had come from or what, what had caused it, that to, to start. And so, it doesn't promise horror, really. It could. So, yeah. I mean, demons are scary. It, 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 it theoretically could. Um, it's, it's, it's a horror comedy, so I think that we get the idea, pretty much. Um, but I would, yes, yeah, so start with this. Start with them finding this evidence or discovering that the RPG that their counselors have been... I don't know, playtesting or whatever, is actually a plot to do blank. They must X specific thing. So um, maybe find the central antagonist and frame that as the kind of like latter half of the logline. So something like okay. they, they must drive a stake through the lead counselor's heart before midnight on the whatever. So see, see if you can maybe frame the villain as like the goal. So we need to defeat this person before this happens. Can the villain be Satan or should I just choose his like <laughs> lieutenant in the story? Uh, Satan can is like the emperor behind the whole thing it seems to me, but you it's hard to imagine how a, a few kids would take out Satan himself, so you probably want to frame it around his main lieutenant or whatever in that. Gotcha. Aspect. Yeah. So I'll say f Okay. Frame around conflict with villain. Yeah, I feel like I might need to write some of the story to fill in parts of this log line. That happens at time. Yeah, that is sometimes the case. Any other questions? Uh, none that come to mind, but if I do, I'll type them in chat. Sounds good. Thanks for sharing. Let's keep going. I think we have two more. Oz. Toronto oh. the Good. That's right. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Okay, excellent. So I'll read this out for you. Toronto the Goods, the title. It's a feature film, true crime, log line. After a mayor candidate's failed attempt to assassinate two musicians, the duo and an undercover police officer must work together to prevent the bombing of his next target, the 1976 Olympics. The cops here are Donnie Brasco and Black uh, Klansman. All right, thanks for this. So I wouldn't recommend writing this for a boot camp just because it's a true story and would require a lot of research. Maybe you've already done research and you already have like um, done some of the groundwork on this. If you have, maybe it's a it's totally fine, but this seems like something that would take a little longer than eight weeks to write. What do you think? I do, but I've done the research. Okay. I haven't completed the writing. I've dived into it. Okay. And I need some direction to help, like, complete the story. Okay. Yeah. If you're already in the process of writing, maybe this will just be a boost that you can use to get to the end. Um, but yeah. yeah, this is very, very, very tricky uh, to write true stories or docudramas or true crime or anything like this. Um, anyway, let's look at the basics. So, after a mayoral candidate fails to assassinate two musicians, the duo, meaning the musicians, and an undercover police officer must work together to prevent the bombing from of his next target, the 1976 Olympics. You Framing the candidate as the first person that you've mentioned kind of makes it sound like that's going to be the main character, whereas I think you want to start this off something like when a, this specific musician avoids the assassination you know what i mean so frame mm, it with gotcha. the main character gotcha. actively doing something um you okay. want to focus more specifically on one of them okay on one hero um active um uh conflicts or hero should be framed oh whoops framed as active in the conflict Um, they must work together to prevent... The, why do the musicians have to help prevent the next bombing? Um, they actually really don't. It's more the undercover cop has to prevent the next bombing. And the two musicians are just a victim of that crime. Oh, but how are they still involved in but the their story? part? But they are part. The victims are part of the of the um, the incident that occurs, the initial incident. So if I don't include the musicians in the log line, then I'm not including the incident. 
they are the incident. Oh wait, though, but then, but so hang on. But right after that, you say they must all work together, but they're not working together. Is that right? Well, they're 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 an active part of the story. They they kind of work together, right? But I mean, the main person that 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 brings the story to light is the undercover police officer, with some help from the the two musicians because they're victims. So of course, the undercover police officer is trying to get their story about what happened on that night, which helps to bring down the the mayor. So if this really happened, I mean, you can always write. That's the kind of the nice thing about true stories is that stories can be weirder than real life, right? In real, yeah. in, if this was a fictional movie, I'd be like, those musicians would not want to be involved in the next plot. Yeah. Who, who on earth would? Yeah. If they just were, yeah. then that's interesting. But you have to make it clear kind of why. If if like if, if they are at all, you're saying they're kind of helping, kind of not. That just feels flimsy. It's like there's gotcha. it's just something that's sort of kind of almost the premise of the movie, and like we want to know what the premise is, not what it sort of almost is. Um, so okay. clarify so that, what's going if on. That there. kind of if that kind of is like like they're just victims, right? Okay. But they didn't help in bringing him down. If that's the case, like should I just remove them from the log line? It's up to you. I'm, well, so are are you fictionalizing the story so they have a bigger role, or are you trying to represent? Yeah, much exactly I am. What, you are. I'm fictionalizing the story so that they have a better, a bigger role in it. Okay, then it, then it's up to you. You may have to, if you're if you gotcha. you are pretending that they then continue to play a part in either the cop's life or in opposition to this crazy bomber, right? Like if they maybe mm. felt like you, you kind of need to figure out whose story this is. Um, so if this is one of the musician stories, then you'd frame them as one, as the hero. If this is primarily about the cop, though, then you're going to want to frame the cop as the lead and clarify the connection of that character to what's going on here. Um, and mm -hmm. because it is a true story, you have a little more leeway there. Also, you like you don't mm -hmm. not every cop has a personal connection to a case in real life. But if there is something, if there's anything there at all that you can bring out and say something like you know, it doesn't have to be the guy that blew up his wife. But it, if it's like I don't know, the mayor of his hometown. Or if it's the, I don't, maybe he, um, his career almost ended because he got injured by another bombing. Or something, if there's any uh, connection between the protagonist and the case that you can highlight, or the protagonist and the villain that you can highlight anything at all, then I would try to bring that out mm. a little bit more. Um, just okay. so we understand what is, because otherwise it's just a procedural, right? It's like, a cop gets a murder case, so he solves it because that's his job. It just doesn't feel that yeah. meteor weighty as a movie, as much as it would if it's a movie where it's like his wife was killed by the killer and now he is a, it's personal, right? It doesn't always have to be that, and that's yeah. a cliched example. But I hope that yeah. that at least can um, make it clear to you how you can amplify the hook of the story by bringing forward that really key. Like we're looking for what what is what's the irony? What's the in, what's the point of interest? How is this a character that is interestingly or ironically mismatched with the situation that they're in, right? With, Got you. So see if you mm -hmm. can like, bring out... The, if the detective is really the main character, start with the he is. detective. He really is, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so start on him then in, in, in that case. Um, see, and... the, the detective is really the main character, mm -hmm. but the musicians are just way more interesting. Oh, okay. They're more right? interesting. They're just, they're just way more interesting, right? So I'm trying to, like... That's why... I, it's hard for me not to focus on them, even though they're not really the main character. Okay. Well, then, if that if the hook of the movie is the that buddy pair up relationship, it's like after saving two wacky musicians from a mad bomber, a cop must now use their help to stop the next bombing. There okay. might be something there, but you'll want mm -hmm. to clarify like why. It just needs to be clear why they're still involved. Do we need them somehow? Like, do they have some skill set they bring to this? Do they have something that we require? Are they just going to do anything but get in the way? Gotcha. Yeah. So that was just a bunch of tips for you, but most centrally, just to reiterate and to recap, protagonist at the center of the, at the front and center of the of the logline. So when inciting incident and adjective protagonists, so be really clear whose story this is, must, okay. and, excuse me, and then you'll you'll give us the hook. So must team up with blank must forge a fragile alliance with blank whatever it is that 
that they have to do mm -hmm. to to team. It's like a team. It sounds like you're setting it up like it's a team up buddy kind of story, like a rush hour yeah. or like any of these, right? Yeah, yeah, um, exactly. And if that's if that's the case, that works well. But then we just need to know why does he need them for the case? whose story is it? Yeah, whose story yeah. is it? And why is he teaming up with these people? Exactly. Right? Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Any questions? No, that was great. Thank you so much. No worries. Thank you for this. It sounds original, so I um, hope you stick with it. Thanks. Thanks, Oz. Um, we're going to go a little over time, but I do, I do just want to finish out the log lines that were posted uh, so far. Thank you guys, everybody, for joining, by the way. This class, so I'll take everyone else, but let me just give, get you for one second to tell everyone, if you're stepping out as we reach the end time, then this class is going to be in this time slot for the next eight weeks. So Fridays from 6 to 8 p.m. You can come to the um, uh, next, is the next, I think the next one is free as well. Week one is uh, free, as is week zero. So you can come to the next one without signing up. Um, if you like it and want to write the whole movie with the course over the next eight weeks, then you can sign up at scriptcamp.net to sign up for unlimited membership. Just um, uh, scroll right down here and you can click the enroll now button and you'll save 40% by signing up yearly. Um, in any case, uh, if you you'll, you'll get you know a complete boot camp if you just are here for two months, so it's uh, kind of the cheapest, the best, the best value, let's say, for this kind of course that you'll find. So hope that you guys sign up. Hope that you keep writing, stick with the course, and uh, we hope to see you back soon. I'm gonna we'll, we'll keep rolling just as I finish up these last two. But feel free, obviously if you've already done yours, then we're at the end time, so you can step out. Uh, okay, let's finish up with our last log line or two or maybe just one more Joyce yep I'm in hello hi so why don't you start by reading out what you have <clears throat> sorry my chat's blocking it let me close it <clears throat> um so it's the nurse, it's a drama, and the log line is um, when an Alzheimer's sufferer doesn't recognize his wife and has her removed from the home, she must figure out a way to return or become homeless. Um, and then I have another one, but it's two sentences, and I think you mentioned we should try to make it one. Do you want me to read Alzheimer's the second one? Yeah, go ahead and just read the second one. An Alzheimer's sufferer thinks his wife of 30 years is a stranger and forces her to leave their home. She must figure out a way to return to care for the man she loves. And then my comps are, oh, uh, my comps are still Alice meets the vow. Yep. Good. Um, so let's look at some of the ba I like the situation and the setup. I mean, it's pretty, it's simple and it's very, you know, um, a kind of conflict we don't really see as the basis of movies a lot. So I think that's cool. Um, he doesn't recognize his wife, has her removed from the home. The problem is I can't really picture what the, like I get the situation, but you haven't really clarified what we're watching someone do for two hours. Like, she must figure out a way to return. So figuring stuff out is a mental process, right? Figuring it out could just be her sitting at a cafe thinking. But what is she actually doing? Well, she leaves the home. She, has, she gets checked into a hotel. And then she um, alters her appearance and comes back as his live-in nurse. Whoa. Um, that's how she gets back to the home. You didn't mention that that's in the logline, That's why nurse. What's that? But that's not in the log. So that almost sounds like that's the hook of the movie. Yeah, that is the hook of the movie. Yeah. Oh, okay. And well, and he actually falls. He doesn't recognize her, but he falls in love with her all over again. Okay. I think you need to scrap the log line you have and go with what you just described to me. Okay. That's the movie. So when her okay. husband, th or just scrap the second half, I guess I would say. So. It's not that she has to figure out a way to return. She has a way to return, and that's what we're watching her do, right? So she, oh. yeah. So we're not the whole. Okay. The, so the logline is telling us what we're watching people do in the middle of the movie. We're not watching her figure it out. She does that very early on. It sounds like, or she makes yep. her plan in kind of like a Mrs. Doubtfire kind of way early on, right? Um, so uh, 
when she's when her and and also when, if you're just starting when alzheimer's suffer that's first of all is, um doesn't tell us much about a person's personality but second of all it sounds like you're setting that up as the main character but you need to start by clarifying the connection between those people when her husband throws or when her um see whatever i don't know if senile is the right word to use whatever it is when her husband who's suffering from alzheimer's throws her out of the house a blank nurse must or a blank what is it how did you describe her you didn't exactly describe who she is either so does she have a background as a nurse already or is she an actor no she's actually like... a chiro- she's a retired chiropractor she's just pretending to be a nurse okay but in any case so you will um she's a retired chiropractor but she's pretending to be a nurse i like the hook of that so she has to sort of trick him into getting back into the house but you need to, yeah. you need to tell us that I, n- I never would have guessed that that's where the story was going okay so um lose the second half of this and rewrite just with what you told me um that's all very interesting okay. and cool and also even the fact that they sort of fa- fall back in love along the way you might kind of you may not really have room for that you might have to kind of um, suggest that and that's like the subtext of what's going on here but frame it mostly around the main character's goal which it sounds to me like it's get him to recognize her again is that right well she he never recognizes her again uh, but he does fall in love with her as the, the new person the oh. nurse so wait but then what's her goal well her goal is to get back in the house and take care of him because she he's her husband and she loves him and she wants to take care of him but it so, sounds like she succeeded at that pretty early so now what yeah but there i mean i guess in the end he falls in love with her again so as a result of her intentionally doing something though or that's just kind of as a result of her being his elder care nurse okay but do you see how you have to tell us what your main character is trying to do from most of the movie if it sounds if she gets into the house and everything's pretty much fine she's accomplished her goal unless you tell me the goal is something more beyond that okay so it could be like is he does she have to kind of constantly find a way to not get thrown out? Like, is he is he suspicious? Yeah, of her? He, he thinks that she's trying to steal his insurance money. Oh, and so yeah, so he keeps trying. He doesn't want her there. Okay, so is she so trying she, to she's convince trying to get him, him to fall in love with her again? So he wants her there. Oh, okay. So if she's trying to deliberately make him fall in love with her again. That does work as a goal. It sounds a little manipulative. You might want to say something like she's trying to get her to she's she's trying to get him to fall back in love with her. That sounds a little less. <laughs> Wait, that okay. I don't I don't exactly know how you'd phrase it, uh, but okay. there must be a kind of romantic way to phrase it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, yeah I'll play the, with it. She is tricking him. It is deceptive, but he needs to be deceived, sort of. Well, because she they can't afford to put him in a long term care, so she has to be the one who takes care of him. I see. I see. Okay. But so then just cl- make it really clear what your character is trying to do and what the obstacle okay. actually is, right? Like what's standing in the way of her actually being able to do that. If, it, if it's something like she moves back in with her husband and now must convince him that she's not a scammer, I think I basically get that. Okay. So just some things to consider. Strong goal and finish, like concrete finish line for the main character. If it seems like the main character finished their goal and the logline's not even over yet, we're wondering how is this a two hour movie? Sure. Okay. Um, and yeah, and yeah, lose the part about her figuring out the way to return home. She has the tactic, and that's the hook of the story. So be really upfront okay. and and clear about what it is. You don't want to withhold the most fun part of of the premise. Gotcha, gotcha. Thank you. Questions? Uh, no, that was very helpful. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Joyce. It's a it's a good premise. So I think just a little adjustment, and you'll get there soon. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Did I miss anyone? Let's see. Uh, it doesn't look like it. All right. Which is good because we're over time. We're at uh, 8.07. I'm 90% sure I got to everybody. Okay. If I missed anyone, we do have lab tomorrow. So, Or if you want to get more feedback or want to adjust it and come back, we have lab tomorrow from 4 to 6 p.m. Every Saturday, you can come by with questions, topics you want to hear about, and up to five pages of anything you're working on for feedback. Thank you guys so much for all coming to this intro class to the movie writing course. We hope to see you for the rest of this, which is going to be Fridays 6 to 8 for the next eight weeks. So until the end of January, with that first script finished around January 26th. So we hope to see you for the rest of it. Um, And even if not, definitely come to other events around the server, swaps, workshops, table reads. They're happening all the time. Over 100 hours of events every single month. 
So there's plenty of stuff to find that you can do here. Um, uh, we will see you guys soon at your next script camp class or event. Hope you have a great rest of your Friday night. Oh, just going to add Go if ahead. anyone is um, extreme night owl or in Europe or Asia time zones, we have a table reads that starts in six hours. So it's 2 a.m. Pacific. Um, and you don't need to submit in advance. You just, you know, um, fill out the form anytime before we start. Let me just post the link there just in case. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Yep, so um, this is our, our international time slot. So if you're in America, obviously you probably won't go to this, but <laughs> unless you can't sleep and you had nine monster energy drinks and now it's time to uh, waste away the midnight hours. Anyway, um, check the chat if you want the link to that. And if you want to see everything we have coming up, just find the very scroll to the very top of the uh, chat channels and you'll find an, a tab called events. You'll see 88 events. Just click on that and you'll see a big calendar of everything we have coming up. Thank you so much, guys. Hope you have a great rest of your weekends.